what that actually could mean then is that uh, so, sort of civilization and consciousness is like a tiny candle in a vast darkness and, and, and a very vulnerable tiny candle that could easily get blown out. Um, and I think we should therefore take great care with what may very well be this tiny candle in a vast darkness and make sure that it does not go out and that we extend the light of consciousness beyond Earth um, and do everything we can to ensure that uh, the light of consciousness does not go out. I think we should be maybe a little bit concerned about uh, actually becoming too much of a single world government. Um, if, if I may say that we want to avoid creating a civilizational risk by half of humanity as a whole because there have been, there've been all these separate civilizations that were separated by great distances. And so, um, you know, say like while Rome was falling, it, uh, it, you know, uh, Islam was rising. And uh, so you had like a, uh, you know, the, the sort of caliphate do, doing incredibly well while Rome was doing terribly. Um, and that actually ended up being a source of preservation of knowledge uh, and, uh, and many scientific advancements. And so, um, so I think we want to be a little bit cautious about uh, being too much of a, world, of a single uh, civilization because if we are too much of a single civilization, then if, if we, if the, whole, the whole thing may collapse. Um, I'm not, obviously not suggesting war or anything like that, but I think we want to be a little bit wary of actually cooperating too much. It sounds a little odd, but um, but we, we just we, we want to have some amount of civilizational diversity such that if uh, if something does go wrong with some part of civilization, that the whole thing doesn't uh, collapse uh, and 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 you know humanity keeps moving forward. It's always difficult to predict technology with precision, um, especially over a ten-year time frame when it is changing so much. Um, I mean, there's, there's there's obviously the transition to sustainable energy uh, with uh, solar wind, batteries, and electric vehicles. Um, and and that, that is, if you look at the percentage growth of that, that is a very high percentage growth. Um, although because of the massive industrial base of, um, you know, of the current sort of um, fossil fuel economy, it, it, even, like, even if all, for example, if electric cars were 100% of production immediately, it would take 20 years to replace the fleet. So this is still something that is quite gradual. You know, it's, it's measured in at least a few, you know, 30, 30 40 years type, type of time frame. Um, on, on a more a sort of near term time frame, I think artificial intelligence is something we need to be um, quite concerned about and really be uh, attentive to the safety of, of AI. Um, you mentioned uh, ChatGPT earlier. Um, you know, I, I played a significant role in the creation of uh, OpenAI. Um, Essentially, at the time, I was concerned that Google uh, was not uh, paying enough attention to AI safety, and, um, and so, and so I, I, with a number of other people, um, created OpenAI. And although initially it was created as an open source nonprofit, and now it is closed source and for profit, I, I don't have any stake in OpenAI anymore, nor, nor am I on the board, nor do I control it in any way. Um, but the, the ChatGPT, I think, has illustrated to uh, people just how advanced AI has become. Um, the, because the AI has been advanced for a while, it just didn't have a user interface that was um, accessible to most people. Um, so what really ChatGPT has done is just put an, an accessible user interface on AI technology that is um, has been present for lots of um, you know, airplane crashes, and in some cases, manufacturers that were cutting corners, um, and and a lot of people were dying. So, they the public was not happy about that, and so they established a regulatory authority to improve safety. And now, commercial airliners are um, extremely safe. Um, in fact, they're safer than than if, if you were to drive somewhere. Uh, it's, like the safety per mile of a commercial airliner is better than a car, and, and cars are also extremely safe compared to where they used to be. Um, so. Um, but if you say, if you look at, say, the introduction of seat belts, uh, the, the auto industry fought the introduction of seat belts uh, as a safety measure for, I think, 10 or 15 years um, before finally the regulators made them put seat belts in cars. And that greatly improved the safety of cars. Um, and then airbags were another big improvement in safety. So, frank, frankly, um, because if you think of any um, technology which is potentially a risk to, uh, civil, to to people, like if it's an aircraft or uh, you know, cars or uh, medicine, 
we have regulatory bodies that um, oversee the public safety of, of cars and planes and medicine. And um, I think we, we should probably we should have a, a, a similar sort of regulatory oversight for artificial intelligence because um, it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or uh, medicine. Um, so, um, and this may slow, slow down AI a little bit, but I think that that might also be a good thing. Um, the, the, the challenge here is that government regulatory uh, authorities tend to be set up in reaction to something bad that happened. So if you look at, say, aircraft or, or cars, um, you know, the cars were unregulated at the beginning, aircraft were unregulated, uh, but they had lots of, um, you know, airplane crashes and in some cases manufacturers that were cutting corners um, and, and a lot of people were dying. So they, the public was not happy about that and so they established a regulatory authority to improve safety and now commercial airliners are um, extremely safe. Um, in fact, they're safer than, than if, if you were to drive somewhere. Uh, it's, the safety per mile of a commercial airliner is better than a car. And, and cars are also extremely safe compared to where they used to be. Um, so, um, but if you say, if you look at, say, the introduction of seat belts, uh, the, the auto industry fought the introduction of seat belts uh, as a safety measure for, I think, 10 or 15 years um, before finally the regulators made them put seat belts in cars. And that greatly improved the safety of cars. Um, and then airbags were another big improvement in safety. So um, my concern is that with AI, if, if there's something bad, that, if something goes wrong, um, the reaction might be too slow from a regulatory standpoint. Um, so I, I, I'd say like, it, 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 you know, if I'd say like, what, what are the biggest risks to the future of civilization? Um, it, it, it's AI, but AI is a double, you know, it's, it's, it's both positive and negative. It has great, great promise, great capability, but it also with that comes great danger. I mean, you look at say nuclear, it, it, you know, just discovery of sort of nuclear physics, uh, you had nuclear power generation, but also nuclear bombs. Um, so anyway, I think we should be quite concerned about it and we should uh, have some regulation of what is it, if, if, uh, fundamentally um, a risk to the public. Uh,